Hi everyone. In today's lesson, we'll be taking a look at the transferring version of the exponential function. So in your notebook, please put down today's subtitle, Transformed Exponential Function. The transformed exponential function has the following format. A multiplied by the base C exponent B multiplied by X minus H plus K. What's unique about this function is that the entire expression b multiplied by x minus h occurs in the exponent position. Perhaps one of the most useful pieces of information that we can extract from the transformed exponential function involves the value of k. k actually reveals the horizontal asymptote of the function located at y equals k. The interesting thing about this function having only a horizontal asymptote and no vertical one is the fact that it causes your domain to include all possible values of x. In contrast, because there is a horizontal asymptote, the range will be therefore limited by this horizontal asymptote. Next, in order to draw a decent graph, we would like to have the zero, if possible, because sometimes there may not be one. And as with any other function, to calculate the zeros, all we have to do is set y equal to zero and solve for x. Unfortunately, there is no shortcut in this. As with any other graph, we would also like to have the initial value. In this graph, because there is no vertical asymptote, there will always be an initial value. And again, to solve it, we set x equal to zero and figure out our y value. Again, unfortunately, there is no shortcutting this. And finally, to have a decent a graph as possible, I would like you to have at least another point. And this makes three points in total. To obtain that third point, all you have to do is plug in any random x to get a y value. As you can predict, with this type of graph and with only three points, our graph will not exactly be 100% accurate. So, Let's get to it with an example. Suppose I ask you to draw the following graph. The function y equals negative 3 times 2 exponent half times x plus 4 plus 6. First things first, let's always identify the horizontal asymptote. Don't forget, it's a value of k that reveals the asymptote. So in this example, our horizontal asymptote will be located at y equals 6. Next, let's calculate the zero if it exists. So to calculate the zero, what we need to do is set the value of y to zero and solve for x. And our expression is negative three multiplied by two exponent half times x plus four plus six. All right, so using your regular algebra skills, Let's begin by moving the plus 6 over to the other side of the equal sign. That gives us negative 6 equals to negative 3 multiplied by 2 exponent half times x plus 4. Next, let's move the negative 3 over to the other side of the equal sign. And that will give us positive 2 equals to 2 exponent half times x plus 4. Now, lucky for us, I made an example where the bases are already the same. So you don't need to change any of the bases to match each other. All you need to worry about is to make sure that the exponents on both sides are identical to each other. This gives us that on the left side, the exponent is 1. And on the right side, the exponent is half times x plus 4. With that established, the rest is just regular algebra. So manipulating our algebra, we get that 2 is equal to x plus 4. And therefore, x is equal to negative 2. So our 0 will be located at the coordinate negative 2 and 0. Next, let's calculate the initial value. As usual, the initial value is calculated by setting x to 0 and figure out your y value. So in this example, we get that y is equal to negative 3 
multiplied by 2 exponent half times 0 plus 4 plus 6. Simplifying, we get y is equal to negative 3 multiplied by 2 exponent 2 plus 6. And finally, finishing, finishing off all your calculations, you get that y is equal to negative 6. So our initial value is located at y equals to negative 6. And finally, to draw a decent graph, I would like to have at least three points. I'd like to find my third point by plugging in any random value of x and calculating a y. I would personally choose to plug in minus 6 into the x. Let's see what happens with that. So we get y is equal to negative 3 times 2 exponent half times negative 6 plus 4 plus 6. Simplifying, that will give us y equal to negative 3 times 2 exponent negative 1 plus 6. And punching and everything carefully into the calculator will produce a result of y equal to 4.5. So that gives us a third point located at the coordinate negative 6 and 4.5. Now we're ready to draw the graph. In order to accommodate the graph as nicely as possible, we'll need a grid that's about this size. So go ahead, pause the video, and prepare your grid now. Alright, with your grid ready to go, let's draw this graph. First things first, always put down your asymptote. In this case, we found that our horizontal asymptote was located at y equals 6. Drawing your asymptote carefully should produce the following line. Don't forget, asymptotes are always drawn with a dotted line. There we go. There's our asymptote located at y equals 6. Next, let's put down the minimum of three points that you should have to draw a decent graph. Luckily for us, a zero did exist, and we found it to be located at x negative 2, right about there. Next, we found that the initial value was located at y equals negative 6, so that will put it right about there. And finally, we found a third random point to be located at negative 6 and 4.5. So that will put it at around here. And finally, using your semi-artistic skills, connecting these three coordinates and approximating a decent curve should give you the following. Please make sure to show clearly that the curve does not touch or cross over the horizontal asymptote. And that's all there is, ladies and gentlemen, to dealing with the transformed version of the exponential function.